Audio Jungle. Right. Uh, Namaskar. Good evening. My name is Navjot Singh Jadeja and I'm a faculty at GNU ICT. And welcome to our live session, live interaction with uh, uh, Navya Singh Rajput. Navya Singh Rajput is a digital journalist at a platform named as Logical Indian based in Bangalore. And in today's session, we'll be interacting with her and discussing various focus areas, various uh, challenges every uh, you know, women focuses, uh, gets into the field of work. So we have Navya, let me just add her here. Okay. Hi, Navya. Good evening. Hi, hi. Good evening, sir. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? Very well. Okay. Thank you so much for your uh, time. I, I know it's been a busy day. We've been interacting since morning, but uh, yeah. I hope we have some time to interact with my students and uh, have some amazing discussion, right? Yes. Looking forward right. to it. Sure. So let me just quickly give an introduction to our audience. We have Navya Singh with us, who is a digital journalist, as I mentioned just before. She works with a, a digital news agency and a firm in Bangalore. And uh, she handles the trending news. She is not only an entrepreneur-minded uh, girl, but she is also somebody who has been doing a lot of work in terms of bringing out the right quality of news. She is a future women leader, and she is doing right now amazingly as a uh, you know, member of an organization where she's leading a lot of fronts. So today we'll be interacting with her uh, and also have certain things which I need to discuss, which my students would uh, love to hear from. But uh, Navya, if I would ask you if, if you can introduce yourself in your words, how would you portray yourself? Right. So as you've already used really flattening words to me, I am Navya Singh. And I'm a journalist, still aspiring to be a big journalist. And uh, I think the only way I can introduce myself is every day I'm trying to bring out stories that deserve the attention of everybody in this country. And uh, I'm someone who loves traveling. I'm daughter of an Indian Army officer. So uh, yeah. I've traveled across the country. And uh, that is when I realized that it's also important to bring out stories from different parts of the country. So that's exactly what I'm pursuing right now. That's about okay. It. And, uh, you know, as, as you know, that this, this interaction is happening as a part of celebration of International Women's Day, right? Yes. And uh, yes. the scenario in the working culture in India is improving. But I think uh, yes. how much has it improved and what is the current state? I think you can throw a better light over that. For the women in the Absolutely. organization, women in the family and as in working women, what are the challenges? Right. Actually, uh, how I see it is we're still a part of an era where women are not decision makers, even in their own families, even in their own households. I don't see a lot of women in their families taking financial decisions or decisions about, say, property or anything. And so these are the some sectors that have been attributed to men per se. deprived of such opportunities. Now speaking as a working professional, I think a lot of things have changed. We have women almost everywhere, right from, you know, governmental positions to authorities to sports, science, space, everywhere. And we're definitely making our way through. Also because women, as I see, have realized their potential, which is step number one if you want to achieve anything in life, is to realize your potential. I think all women have come out really strong we've realized what we're capable of, what we're capable of offering to the world and what the world needs from us. I think that sort of plays a very important role. And yes, we do have a long way to go. We do need uh, men and you know organizations to acknowledge our presence, to be comfortable with our presence at various positions. Because a lot of times women are qualified, they're strong enough to handle positions, but it's only because the organization has not seen a woman at that position. 
they're not willing to offer it to her so i think that needs to change but again we're on the path we're on the way to you know bring that sort of revolution and i think it's going good wonderful so basically uh, you're right uh, probably it's all about the mindset somewhere uh, you know accepting women leaders is something which we are getting used to and i'm sure uh, it's bringing out a new dimension in terms of bringing lot of women leaders and talking about yeah. women leaders what happens is uh, you know when we talk about ict and the, the the university where we work so we have a lot of people working into the computer science field and especially mm-hmm. a lot of specializations getting offered so yeah. those people those girls who are looking at you and uh, you know probably the future leaders in their own organizations so what would you suggest them how to prepare because technically sometimes they are equally or sometimes even what my experience is they are better than the you know the boys in the class but when it comes to leadership yeah. probably uh, somewhere the confidence is not there so how do you want them to prepare uh, those things from the college days itself right actually when if i talk about myself i'm not someone who's best to give opinions on this but it's just the fact that maybe i've done this before somebody else has done maybe you know at your university or uh, elsewhere but i think um, as i mentioned the first step would be deciding what you want to do deciding your priority and your potential so the day i decided to be a journalist and the day i decided that okay fine i will write stories that will sort of make people uncomfortable in certain sections of the country but i will still continue to write it i will you know go in front of the camera or report stories the day i decided that i think half of my work was done and then i just had to sort of find a path to follow it i think that's really important and one really important thing when we talk about careers for women is financial independence now it was just today when we were having this conversation at work when we realized that we're still you know living in an era where uh, women are sort of not completely uh, eligible for property of their own parents or their husband's parents these are the sort of yeah. debates that are still going on in courts now at such a time if you're not a working professional or if you you know deprived of financial uh, skills and all of those things you need to sort of survive you need to fulfill your needs and Correct. for that you need to be financially independent one of the reasons i'm st- i started working be it <coughs> as a journalist or whatever irrespective of my profession has been because i want to be financially independent however you know whatever lifestyle i want to have in future i want it to be based on my hard earned money and not anybody else i think mm-hmm. that gives you respect and also the amount of independence you need and the status that you need in the society that as a woman is really really important and secondly i think uh, to all this is to all the women uh, in the university as well i think when we or when one navya singh rajput you know tries to achieve her dream she is also lifting up other women who are deprived of their opportunity i have no right to give up on my dream and sit back and say that i can't do it because somewhere or the other somebody is getting inspired by me even now now that i'm a journalist i look at instagram stories of several journalists and several other people several women who are at such high positions doing really well for themselves and all i want to be is to be like them this is okay. this is the era where you just look at their pictures you look at how people are you know going for seminars going for talks going for ted talks trying to uh, you know express their opinions and then you get inspired by these people i if i am living my dream here if i am doing journalism here if i am reporting stories living alone earning i'm also uplifting somebody else who's deprived of all the all of these opportunities Correct. i think that is a responsibility we hold as a community as females i think we really need to do that considering how several females across this country even now uh, you know in 2021 are deprived of basic amenities and opportunities i think that is really important Okay. and uh, there have been several there have been uh, several examples recently that i have read and that have really taken me aback was especially this um, auto driver's daughter who was a se- runners up for miss india i yep. think there are several there are several people who are breaking you know barriers all the glass ceilings and doing really really well for themselves so i'm sure all of us have our own obstacles have our own challenges be it biological be it you know related to family financial anything for that matter but the day you decide to sort of you know break through them and achieve what you want to and that can be anything what is a very common thing right now is the idea of a ideal career everybody wants Correct. to be somewhere 
earning a lot having Secure, a really nice yeah. vehicle having yeah so i think that sort of you know confuses people because we aim at something that looks un- un- unachievable for us and then we sort of break down when we say okay fine we can't you know we can't really achieve that i think that is really demoralizing a career can be as simple as changing car tires as simple as that there are so many women who have left their lavish careers and lavish lifestyles come back to their villages in remote areas of the country and tried uplifting other people living in those villages that is a responsibility as i mentioned you hold as a community and that is your idea that's how you define your success and what you want to be in this country i think that is important totally true and actually if you if you see uh, you know last year or two there a lot of examples hmm. coming from our country itself which normally is not the case Absolutely. where uh, you know a lot of women are doing great in their careers especially challenging situations like you know I was reading a story uh, including uh, the sprinter himma das uh, you know getting promoted Absolute, as yes. in the yeah Absolute. and that's an yes, inspiring yes. journey because uh, whatever she has achieved through uh, ranks in terms of, in terms of you know uh, you know not only this athletic career but the way she has you know uh, motivated other people in the team doing the things for the community that's something really inspiring and uh, you know that's what the next thing which i wanted to ask you know because the as women as the girls in the in the, uh, the university sometimes they want to have a focus area so let's say technical education is in, or just education is the first focus area second thing as you said is wonderful when you have a goal of your own right and probably the third thing uh, right sort of leaders to look up to uh, as in the role models anything else you think uh, the girls in university should be you know looking forward to in terms of themselves developing into the future leaders and when i say leaders anywhere if they are working as in you know right sort of jobs careers i think they are leading the front right so Absolutely. anything that's the, the way you said you know wherever they are if it is in a village helping the community or like working in uh, logical indian as in the you know journalist or somewhere as in faculty with me as in my colleague everywhere i see them as a leader right so what should be yes. the focus areas for them how should they plan their career ahead now it's quite interesting actually to answer this question because we are having this conversation at a time when women are everywhere as i mentioned almost yeah. everywhere we've not yes. left any field uh, unexplored but i think one common thing when you look at women leaders one very common thing amongst all is how they stay committed to their dreams and themselves i think that is point number 1 there can be nothing more important than staying committed to your dreams and you can literally you know this is a sort of a question where people can actually give points okay fine you can be in politics you can be in sports you can be in science and whatsoever but it can be as basic as anything you know riding an auto rickshaw for that matter that is uplifting we don't really have many female auto rickshaw drivers or female cab drivers that is uplifting anything that you want to do for your idea of a career and that makes you feel like a self made woman that makes you feel okay fine you've done something by you know all by yourself and that will inspire others my idea i think the day i became a journalist was not the fact that uh, you know i'd end up inspiring a lot of other goals of women per se my idea was i inspired myself there are a lot of times i look at my own videos and i'm like oh my god this is not me because i could i could not really engage with the audience so well you peers back so i think you your competition is yourself and nobody else but the idea is to stay committed wherever you go be it politics as you mentioned the careers and the uh, sectors and the fields are endless you can literally do anything anywhere but as long as you're passionate and you know that you have to do this irrespective of all the obstacles hindrances and everything and uh, you know one important thing because uh, i have been uh, socially following you and uh, it's been a journey since we are connected since one and a half year or so so it's that uh, you know you had a tough year i think if i'm not wrong in the lockdown you were not with the family right yeah and uh, managing the career because the thing were going things were going on the the digital platforms were on and sometimes Absolutely. it's really tough to be not around the family also yesterday itself you know a lot of people in the audience might not know we're having this session because yesterday you were traveling and uh, day before when we were discussing you were actually with the family for very short period of time mm-hmm. right and as you mentioned by default also you have been traveling because of the dad's job and everything so how do you balance the th- things you know the family uh, not being around 
being around and then you know you have the work sometimes because that's the weakness which a lot of people bring out for the women in terms of career that they are not good at balancing and i've seen you and i think a lot of people in here in the audience would also when they they see you in the profile they will see a balance of a leader who is working in an organization and then somewhere she is also a family person who takes out time for that so how do you balance those things and i think it... um, i i mentioned this initially since the fact that my dad is in the army it's been really it sort of got into my blood to you know travel and simultaneously manage things so even when i shifted to bengaluru i think two years that's how usually it happens right in the army you stay somewhere for two to three years and then you shift it to some other place so i've been here for good five years but when i completed the second year here i got a little restless i wanted to move out of the city because that that's the kind of habit i was of and then i wasn't really comfortable in staying here and as you mentioned it does it does get a bit lonely it does you know uh, takes a toll on your health there are days when i break down from when i come back from work and i want to call my parents and tell them that i want to come back and there are times that even they want me to come back uh, this time around they were you know convincing me of staying back yeah. but obviously i mean everybody has his or her own way of dealing with all of these things but i think what's important is how you overcome them and uh, it's important how these things don't really dominate what you want to do i i want to live with my parents i want to take care of them i want to be pampered i want to stay at home i want to have good food i don't want to you know manage everything alone but um, i think at the same time i love what i'm doing and uh, there is a sort of self satisfaction when i go back to sleep i know i've done something i know even if i've just you know sort of uh, written one story or recorded one video that not much just 500 people might have, must have watched i think that has also brought some sort of a change slight change in the society i think that is my idea of self satisfaction and that's what keeps me in bengaluru away from my home uh, uh exactly you know a uh, lot of people don't know the thing which you said it's not only women who feel that uh, their bad days at work and we feel like quitting and you know going back to doing things something else so that uh, i think uh, as in you know professional person who's been working with industry of education for more than a decade i think i also feel this uh, every other day because we have the good days and the bad days but sometimes you know it's just uh, the tag lines which are attached with the women saying you know you're not able to balance and i i think yes. uh, what i would like to appreciate on this platform not only to you but to everyone else that the amount of balance which women are doing nowadays considering the job the careers the education and the family and then there are lot of expectations which is right. tremendous and there's a lot of pressure and uh, only thing i think we need to do is we need to have an environment where we can allow them to flourish right yes. uh, so so last thing would reminds me this reminds me how we often you know told women of as you mentioned maintaining a balance we were often told women to keep their careers as the second priority correct, correct. and focus their focus on other things that you know make them better in their idea but i think uh, it's important to question it it's important to question and also understand that these things whatever things we you know attribute to women also belong to men So just because yeah. I can stay back at home and look after my parents or cook for them or you know take care of their health is it is as much as my duty as my brothers or any other male member in the family. So I think that is important to realize because we often you know women often tend to succumb under this societal pressure and not yeah. and give up on their dreams. I think that is very dangerous, very very dangerous because. even if you know i i uh, can be sitting in bengaluru speaking like very privileged women and then there can be women in remote areas where they have to give up on their careers or whatever plans they have in future to you know look after their family but obviously situations are different but the idea is to never give up the idea is it's not just it's what i choose right now that my daughter or my offspring or the future generations will also see and look up to that's the kind of example you wonderful up. that's that's totally true and one last question i have is like you know you are coming from somewhere as like i know you've been traveling a lot since uh, as you mentioned since the school days and everything but bangalore uh, it's kind of one of the toughest city right it's it's a uh, lot of people tell it's really fast and sometimes it's really cold also and i know yeah. uh, you know it's really cold because i know how the corporates work so for a women to be working there you know you know and balancing as in facing all this is a challenge 
so if like because uh, again why my question is on bangalore because a lot of my students being into cyber world they actually shift to the uh, places like bangalore pune which are it hub mm. right and then they don't know the it's it's not only about the work pressure sometimes it's always as i said you know the cold behavior the 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 mm. balance of things so how do you you know manage that or how do you suggest them to be that, moving forward that is that is irrespective of bangalore that's everywhere you will always and i think that's also irrespective of gender yes yeah, it does yeah, happen in the yes. case of women wherever you go wherever you start working there will always be factors and people trying to pull you down trying to show you your place and trying to tell you that you know you don't belong here and there have been days where i have come back introspected and you know uh, overthought of my decision of moving away from my family and living in bangalore but that has never sort of dominated my idea of staying here i obviously there are going to be days you're going to come back from work break down and you know think again whether you really want to do this whether you really want to compromise everything else and work here but the idea of you know sort of keep going is what sustains is what keeps you here i think that is very important because honestly there is nothing we can't there is nothing especially a woman can't do there will be pressure there will be corporate pressure there will be pressure from your superiors there will be pressure from your family a lot of times women have a really you know conducive work environment but the pressure from family who are sitting in some other cities also immense which is why they sort of break down there are pressures from everywhere but i think it's it's difficult to manage definitely it's very difficult to manage and i i'm speaking as someone who's unmarried but i'm sure as and when i grow up i have a family i have kids i will have increasing challenges but i think the idea is to keep going wonderful so basically uh, you know if we we understand somewhere because i'll like to summarize few things in in the discussion which we had which was an amazing one so uh, women as I, i told you earlier also and i always have been telling are more than capable you know as as there was Absolutely. a saying that you know they are stronger uh, by default so they don't have to uh, you know uh prove their worth but then again i think somewhere if we, if we can have a conducive environment we can have uh, people supporting them probably they could do much better than what they are doing already and uh, absolutely as, the idea is to identify their strength yeah that's all and uh, you know as as i said uh, and as you have also mentioned that if we have the family and things supporting around us right and uh, if we can open up our eyes in accepting because see journalism itself if you talk about 15 years late uh, earlier was not something where uh, we were preferring women and now if we see a, any any digital or uh, cable media and if we see it's it's purely dominated in fact i would yes. love to listen to uh, a women uh, you know presenter because of the presentation skills and all the other things which attributes to her work rather than just yeah. uh, you know appearance which was the earlier case of a bias so i would say it's this is how if we can take up one uh, you know domain at a time and allow them to flourish i think we can do great in that ways also absolutely and we are doing great absolutely. yeah yeah of course so any message for the girls in the university before i think all up? yeah very talented very intelligent very passionate about what they are doing and most of them all of them will you know choose different career paths it's not important what they're studying right now they pick something that is related to what they're studying i'm sure they have you know a lot of options they will choose one of them but as i mentioned it's important to realize what they are capable of and more important to realize that nobody else is supposed to tell you what you're capable of i think we are our best judges we know what we can do we know what we can excel at and um, it's always better to you know it's always good to reach out for support and uh, sort of share our woes with everybody but it's also important to live your life and understand how it's important to create a life all by yourself irrespective of all the challenges so i'm sure all the girls at the university are very strong and uh, very ambitious to work with us and one more thing i'd like to add is uh, let the women fail everybody fails so there's no pressure to be added on only on the men yeah because the yeah. day the day you start trying you're all, you're already you're already on your victory path the day you start trying yep. there will be challenges there will be times where you can't achieve what you need to but i think the fact that you're trying the fact that you realize that you need to do this i think that's where you wonderful so thank you so much for your time uh, navya after a busy day i'm sure the students uh, 
watching it live and also once we posted on the youtube would have this wonderful uh, understanding of the scenarios and uh, different focus areas where current leaders like you who are doing great in in the field of different uh, you know environments uh, look up to so thank you for your time uh, have a great day thank and so much. thank you for connecting thank you. yeah all right thank you so much bye bye